In the last lessons, we've made the CSS for the body, and we've learned a little bit about floats. Now let's make some CSS for the H1 tag. So we do it the same way we wrote the CSS for the body. We write the element that we want to select, so H1, open the curly brace, and close the curly brace, and let's give it that float property we just learned about. And we'll have it float left. We'll also add on another property, which is a color. So before, we were changing the background color with the background property. Now we're going to change the text color with the color property. And again, the color is written as RGB, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, for good habits. And inside, I'm going to make the color 100, 0, 0. And that will give us a dark red. Now I just want to emphasize closing your tags, curly braces, parenthesis, and everything else. I know when I first started, the person I learned from told me, make sure you always close what you open. And there were times where I forgot. Then when you go to look at the web page, it's completely messed up and it might take hours to find the problem. I know a lot of other developers who did the same exact thing as me when they started out. And now once you're experienced, it's not like, oh, well I've been doing this for 10, 20, 50 years, even though the internet's not around for 50 years. But anyway, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm better than closing everything that I open right away. No, it's actually the opposite. After you get more experience, you finally begin to realize the importance of closing everything that you open. It really just saves a lot of time and a lot of headaches. Also, make sure that you put the semicolon at the end of each CSS statement. Otherwise, your CSS is going to get very messed up. I'm also going to put one more property here, and it's a margin of zero. Now before we added the margins of auto, which centered the document. This does something a little different. H1 tags, along with every other tag, automatically comes with a margin above and below it. In a lot of cases, the margin looks pretty nice and it works out. In this case, we don't want it. So we're going to reset that margin and make it zero. Now let's save and refresh the browser. And you can see that the H1 and the H2 tag are on the same line. Now this H2 here, this is a little close to the H1. In fact, I would like for the text of the H2 to be centered inside of the body, so it should be somewhere over here. Back in Notepad, we have a problem here. Before with the body and the H1, we were able to select the tag just by writing which tag to select. But now with the H2, we actually have multiple H2 tags. See, there's one here and then another one here. So if we were to just make a CSS rule to style the H2, it would actually style both of these at the same time. So how do we pick out just this H2 over here? Well, I'll show you. To make a specific selection, we need to type the containing tag name, then the specific tag name that we want to select. So in this case, this H2 is inside of the header tag. So let's write here at the top, header, then a space, then H2. And it's sometimes easier to read this backwards, so I'm selecting the H2 inside of the header. Now I could even write body over here and make it H2 inside of the header inside of the body. But that's not necessary because this is already specific enough. Just know that if you have multiple tags inside of each other that you can keep getting more and more specific. So let's style the H2 inside of the header. I said that I wanted the text to be centered. So I'm going to write here, text, dash, align, colon, center, semicolon. Save it, come back to the browser, and we can see that the text has been moved over and centered. But let's do two other things to this text. First, I want this text not to be so bold, and I also want to change its color. Just like there are browser defaults for each element to have a margin, some of the heading tags default to being bold. I don't want that here. So back in Notepad, let's write font dash weight colon normal semicolon. Because the H2 defaults to being bold, we need to bring it back to being normal. On the next line, we're going to write color to change the color of the text. Same as before, RGB, open and close parenthesis, and let's make this 0, 150, 175. Save open the browser and refresh the page and I think that looks pretty good. 
At this point, you're beginning to realize that web development is so interesting. And the more you know, the more you want to know. In the next lesson, we'll move on to the section tag.